Hello and welcome to the People's Mental Stimulus Update. I know I promised I'd do something on the Democrats and I will so as I get more information on them. I just haven't been digging, I've been so busy working and being super tired. So today I thought I'd indulge your intellect by doing a reaction video to basically, oh, what is it? Um, I think it was a what the heck is it called here? I can't remember what it's called. It's called Designers Who Should Go to Hell for Their Ideas. And this way you guys see my honest reaction to some of the funny stuff that they do. And hopefully you will enjoy it. So if you do, just let me know in the comments. And hopefully I entertain you as well. Thank you. Human beings are a little inconsistent when it comes to the quality of our design ideas. While some of our finest minds have come up with stuff like this, others have come up with stuff like this. Unfortunately, it's the bad design ideas that really stand out when we encounter them in our everyday lives. Some design fails are so bad they're funny, but most of the time they're either infuriatingly inconvenient or just plain awful. So, for your entertainment and education, let's check out some of the works of our planet's worst designers. While the current trend of companies producing more eco-friendly products is certainly a good thing, some companies do the whole movement a massive disservice through terribly designed products. And while many companies claim to care about the environment, some are infuriatingly hypocritical in not practicing what they preach. Like National Geographic magazine, for example, who printed this issue on the global ecological threat that single plastics posed, which came wrapped in not one, but two single-use plastic bags. <laughs> Then there's these biodegradable sponges, sold by a company who proudly labeled them as made entirely from recycled materials. Unfortunately, it seems like this pro-environment message was lost on their packaging department, who decided to wrap the sponges in a plastic packet, as well as being individually wrapped in plastic too. <laughs> But the biggest hypocrites in the world of allegedly eco-friendly design have to be Apple. The $2 trillion company recently made the controversial move to stop supplying earphones and charger wall plugs in the box with their new iPhones. Apple claimed the change was an attempt to be more environmentally friendly by producing less packaging and electronic waste, built on the assumption that most people have a charging plug already. Now, this wouldn't be such an awful idea were it not for one important detail. The charging cables Apple supplied with their new iPhones only connect to USB-C ports. These types of ports are only found on the latest charging plugs Apple have released, meaning those with old standard USB charging plugs can't even use them. So anyone with these older plugs would need to buy additional items for the basic task of charging their phone. For an official Apple wall charger and earphones, consumers could look forward to paying $40 extra for stuff other phone companies still provide as their standard. What's more, buying those accessories would land you with this much packaging waste in addition to the iPhone box itself. More waste than if the stuff came included as standard. On top of that, the additional emissions required to deliver this stuff to stores and people's houses means this so-called environmental effort actually works out worse for the environment. Reportedly, this move made each iPhone sale 1% more profitable for Apple. Some theorize this was intended to offset additional costs of producing 5G-ready phones. But considering how profitable iPhones already were, with the iPhone XS Max reportedly making 200% profit versus production costs per sale, it's still hard not to feel like consumers are being cheated, and all in the guise of saving the environment. Pretty outrageous, right? Well, if you want to balance out these devilish designs with something pleasant, be sure to like this video and subscribe to Be Amazed. With amazing fact-based content posted daily, it's a guaranteed way to counteract life's frustrations with hearty entertainment. 
But now, let's get back to some very unfriendly design, of which some of the most devious can be found in the apps we use every day. One of the most recent sneaky design changes was delivered by Instagram with the intention of getting users to spend money. How? Well, Instagram's developers attempted to manipulate our muscle memory to try to get us to use their shopping features. They did this by releasing an update that sneakily changed the user interface in a subtle but very much intentional way. All the way from 2011 through to mid-2020, the notification tab had always been along the bottom of the in-app interface. But this update moved the notification tab to the top oh, right can, corner, sure. replacing its previous position with a tab devoted to Instagram's equivalent of eBay. This clearly intended to get users to misclick due to the muscle memory of where to go for their notifications in hope they might be drawn into buying a purchase. These purchases, in turn, would earn Instagram a fee. For those who noticed the sneaky attempt to capitalize on user habits to increase profits, it felt pretty sleazy to say the least. Though, if you're like me, this only served to make me determined never to buy stuff from Instagram. But the selfie center of the world isn't the only app guilty of some seriously devilish tactics designed to get users to spend. Food apps are some of the guiltiest parties when it comes to coaxing cash from you like the McDonald's delivery app, which uses fake notification alerts which claim your order will be delivered soon in big text, with small text underneath that continues soon after you finally place it order now with a winking emoji. One Reddit user received the McDonald's notification in question while they were struggling with money and had to suffer a moment of genuine distress and panic before they realized they'd been maliciously tricked by the app. If that's not a reason to uninstall out of spite, I don't know what is. Moving away from the cesspit of sneaky app design apps. now and into the real world, it's time for some seriously bad designs from the world of town planning. Be it through unbelievable oversight or just plain disregard for citizens, town planners really fall short sometimes in the design department. Like the genius who thought it'd be a good idea to place street lights bright enough to light a stadium along this residential street in Cleveland, Ohio. Good luck sleeping at night with a miniature sun outside your bedroom window. Then we have this monstrosity. Whether the pole got built before the ATM or vice versa is unclear but the end product is one heck of an eyesore regardless. On the bright side, at least you get something to lean on while you wait for your transaction to process. But sometimes terrible town planning designs completely ruin a construction's intended purpose, like this basketball court, the designers of which took cutting corners to a whole new level. While this bizarre court shape is likely due to piping or wiring underneath the cornered area that regulations prevent building on, you'd have thought the planning division would have considered that beforehand. After all, how difficult could it have been to plan the court 10 feet to the left? Some of the worst failures of urban design clearly have good intentions, but are delivered with such a lack of thought it's hard to believe they ever got approved like the stop and alarm buttons on this bus. Pretty easy to differentiate for most people, but for the visually impaired, not so much. And not just because they wouldn't be able to see the different colors, the main issue is both buttons say stop in braille, rendering the addition useless and potentially embarrassing wow, for the very people its dim-witted designers had tried to help. But sometimes, helping the vulnerable is the opposite of what town planning departments attempt to do, such is the case with these benches in Philadelphia's subway system, which are designed to be too awkward and uncomfortable for homeless people to sleep on. However, in making them intentionally inconvenient for the homeless, the designers inadvertently made the benches completely uncomfortable for anyone who tried to take a seat on them. Now, with no real purpose, they just sit there, looking like the aftermath of the Hulk taking his anger out on a radiator. Moving from poorly thought out public spaces to disastrously designed personal possessions, we have this soldering iron shared by Reddit user Stim Jerling. Looks pretty normal at first, until you realize that the screw in the handle is so poorly placed that it touches the heating element inside. 
as soldering irons get very hot, with temperatures sometimes exceeding 800 degrees Fahrenheit, with a metal screw conducting heat to the finger of the user, this design fail isn't just dumb, it's dangerous. Staying on the topic of burningly stupid designs, we have this candle, purchased by another Redditor. The designers were so focused on producing something at low cost, they forgot to consider one important factor – the heat resistance of the plastic candle holder. For that reason, when lit, the candle melted its own container. If the candle wasn't scented before, it was now, with a strong fragrance of toxic burning plastic. Hooray! Many of the bad designs people encounter are more deceptive than dangerous, like this listing on Amazon, appearing to advertise a unique dinosaur-themed pillowcase for kids. Seems like harmless fun, right? Well, for those who ordered it, this is what they received. Not only was the pillowcase not dinosaur-shaped, the kid from the picture was also printed onto it. Creepy. A similar case of pathetically poor printing was on show with this Amazon listing, which appeared to advertise coffee mugs that changed their appearance when filled with hot water, as demonstrated with before and after pics. However, what arrived was actually just a mug featuring a picture of the other two mugs. Both of these abysmal printed products were clearly scams, capitalizing on the success of the original product they were feebly attempting to imitate, and both were removed from sale shortly afterwards. Not all bad designs are quite so deceptive, though. Whether it be due to a lack of creative talent or some serious oversights in the manufacturing process, some designs are just plain bad. Like this advert in the shampoo section of a store. While it's supposed to show a woman with her hair up in a towel, the brightness of the white just makes it look like she's got a remarkably unfortunate haircut. If that's how those shampoos make your hair look, I'd be surprised if they made a single sale. That is, unless Tintin's a regular at the store. Of course, laughably bad design isn't restricted to the world of commerce. People make equally awful design choices in their own homes, like the homeowners responsible for putting their fridge slap bang in the middle of their kitchen at a jaunty angle. It looks like the interior designer forgot a kitchen needs a fridge then added to the plans last minute. Perhaps they convinced the unwitting homeowners that middle-of-the-room fridge cupboards were a hot new trend? I want it. It's everything. But when it comes to poor taste, it doesn't get much worse than this utterly cursed sight. A bathroom with a carpet all the way up the side of the tub. Putting aside the questionable color, it's not hard to shudder at the thought of what kind of filth odor, damp, and mildew has accumulated in that carpet over the years. Don't be ridiculous. Think of the smell. You haven't thought of the smell! Not to mention the skin-crawling sensation of squelching around on the dampened surface after taking a bath. But there's one type of restroom that's even worse than a carpeted one. A restroom with clear glass toilet stalls. It's like something out of a nightmare. While the reason behind this choice is unknown, it's certainly a guaranteed way to make people hurry up their business. After all, would you stay there for long if someone was making eye contact with you while waiting impatiently for their turn? I think not. While laughably bad designs are often a matter of taste, other times they're the result of a total lack of logic, like this electrical button panel an internet user shared online. While you'd usually expect the numbers to ascend from left to right, continuing on each line, these read from top to bottom. That is, until we reach the number 9, which is followed by 12A. Then 12, then 16, 10 finally appears, randomly squeezed between 6 and 16, but 11 doesn't pop up until after 15. It all finishes with 18 and 17, in the wrong order. And for some reason, 17 is given to buttons. Whoever wired this thing either took some serious creative liberties with the approach or just made several mistakes. Either way, looking at it makes it feel like you're losing brain cells by the second. Unlike obviously bad designs, some design fails are only apparent from certain perspectives. Like this set of stairs, which looks perfectly safe and you might even say pleasant when approaching the door. 
but for those stepping through the door, looking down, they blend into what can only be described as a broken ankle waiting to happen. For a literal step-by-step -step guide on how to get sued for dangerous decor, look no further. Staying on the topic of designs whose danger lies in how you look at them, take a look at these. At a glance, with packaging that references candy both in its general style and in the images it features, you'd be forgiven for thinking these were packets of tasty, juicy jawbreakers. But you'd be wrong. These are all bath bombs and are merely scented like candy. While they do say bath bombs on their label, I can't help feeling these are merely one half-distracted parent away from a child tucking in and having a very unpleasant surprise. But the big question is, do you think manufacturers intentionally made these look like candy to trick people into buying them? Or do people really like bathing in candy aromas? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, not all poorly designed packaging is dangerous or misleading. Some of it is bad simply because it benefits the manufacturers at the expense of the consumer's convenience. Like an unforgivable change the manufacturers of the classic brick tower game Jenga made to their packaging design. In order to fit more boxes on the shelves, and hence sell more volumes of the product, Jenga's manufacturers changed their box design to a wider, more attention-grabbing form factor. This replaced the old, perfectly square-topped box that fit the fully-formed Jenga tower, that could be pulled out and played immediately and stored neatly away afterwards, ready for next time. The new design sported a rectangular base and was shorter, meaning it no longer fit a full tower forcing purchasers to assemble it from scratch every time. Never before has a nostalgic toy betrayed us so badly. Now, crummy packaging that inconveniences the user of a product is one thing, but packaging that intentionally misleads consumers about its contents, particularly in terms of quantity, is a whole other kettle of fish. Unfortunately, though, this is something that happens all the time, as is the case with the dark secret inside what appears to be a considerably large container of superglue. Seems like a decent size, but when the front plate is removed, the truth is revealed. It's just a regular-sized glue packet in fancy clothing. But not only is this sneaky deception, which is carried out in a number of varieties, a waste of plastic, it's also sold by weight. This means many people assume they're getting more than the regular amount of glue, only to find they've just paid for more packaging. While this packaging claims to make applying the glue slightly easier, with all that empty space inside, you think they could have at least made the tube a little bigger. Not to mention the fact that a lot of glue would be wasted, considering this oversized plastic casing isn't as good as your fingers at squeezing out the last few drops. So when it comes to glue, just stick to what you know. Cosmetic products are some of the worst offenders when it comes to egregious, unnecessary packaging. If you haven't experienced it firsthand, let me enlighten you with this. Seems like a fairly standard box holding a tub of moisturizer, right? Well, look how much you actually get when you pull it out. All that cardboard is wasted on nothing but empty space. Some companies claim these kinds of tactics are to help with theft prevention. But even if that is true, I can't help but feeling it's a little too convenient that this technique also tricks people into believing they're getting more for their money. With the added marketing benefit of a bigger box being more likely to catch people's attention, I definitely smell some deception. But while cosmetic products can make spotting deception difficult until they're out of the box, there is a way to avoid being misled by packaging of a different kind. If you ever spot a container that's supposed to be filled with lots of items of a single type, like this box of pens, be sure to look close at the label. If it says something like 150 pieces rather than 150 pens or whatever the specific item's meant to be, there may be trickery afoot. Pieces is a super vague word, and in the case of pens, can refer to everything including the pens themselves, their pen lids, the box, packing cardboard, any instruction sheets, and so on. And that's exactly the trickery here. 
150 pieces lands you with less than half that amount of pens in a cardboard padded box with the swindle hidden behind a big sticker. Not to mention the fact that most of the colors are just repeats. Maybe the hole in the middle is just a space to store your disappointment? While we're on the topic of outrageous scams that don't give you your money's worth, there's no better example than American universities. While college in the USA is ludicrously expensive in general, I'm talking specifically about college books. These tomes of knowledge, which are never included in the extortionate university fees, often cost poor students upwards of $100 a pop, and don't usually cover much more than a term's worth of learning. But here's the worst part. The publishers of these oversized learning manuals, laughing from their thrones of cash, sometimes don't even bother to bind the books. Increasingly commonly, textbooks like these ones, with prices ranging from $110 to $240 per book, arrive as merely a collection of hole-punched sheets. With these unbelievable textbook costs, not to mention the huge debts tuition fees rack up, the future can often seem uncertain for newly graduated students. But post-college life was intended to be painted in an optimistic light in this next university-related design fail with disastrous results. This ad for graduation photography was supposed to imply that there was a bright future on the horizon, but it ends up having some darker implications. The graduate walking on the train tracks with a light in the near distance makes it look like an approaching train is about to provide a very morbid solution to those college debts. I guess this is what people mean when they say, man, life really hits hard after school. But you know what's good for cheering yourself up when life gets tough? Cake. That is, so long as your local baker doesn't have any dishonest tactics baked into their products. Unfortunately, some cake mixers utilize a pretty shocking tactic of stuffing their cakes with polystyrene foam or cardboard to make them look bigger than they actually are, as various people have shared online. The devious ploy usually involves half the cake being made up of the filler material but hidden behind a wrapping of fondant. While this practice is actually legal, seeing as there is technically a full cake inside, the risk of swallowing some of the inedible filling sends this bad design ploy straight to danger town. But when food's concerned, nothing proves looks can be deceiving more than the use of a technique I like to call deceptive arrangement. This is when an item is placed in its packaging in such a way that it looks like you're getting a good-sized, high-quality serving. But once you buy it and open it up, you realize you've been woefully swindled. Like this pizza, for instance, where the sparse toppings have been tactically arranged to peek out of the transparent panel on the box, leaving the rest of the pizza embarrassingly bare. Clearly, those meatballs wanted a window seat. And how about these cookies? Looks like a very generous serving of jam on the packet. But, oh, oh dear. Either there was some issue on the production line, or that's some flagrant false advertising. Let's hope it's the former, but regardless, those cookies are about a million miles away from how they're presented on the packet. Some of the most common food scams of this kind come in the form of convenience store sandwiches, or as I like to call them, scamwiches. Now, no one expects culinary mastery from a convenience store snack, but this? This is just too much. From the front, these scamwiches look pretty well filled, but with the filling taking a front seat only, it proves to be all just an illusion. Even so, at least you get some variety in that scamwitch, unlike this one, which, once disassembled, reveals the feeblest attempt at a salami and pickle combo the world has ever seen. If 2020 was a sandwich, you're looking at it. And if there was ever a hotel where room service would be likely to bring you the scamwitches you just witnessed, it'd be the one visited by Reddit user Official Fobs in 2019. When booking a room at the hotel, the Redditor paid extra for a room with a bigger TV. However, when he got settled in and went to switch the TV on, this was what greeted him. Instead of shelling out for bigger TVs in certain rooms, the hotel instead placed large wooden plastic casings around 
small TVs. It's certainly one of the most creative forms of deceptive design I've seen, but that doesn't make it any less of a betrayal. After the Redditor realized that the small screen that appeared wasn't just an issue with the TV settings, they had a good laugh at the trickery. But how would you react if this happened to you? Let me know in the comments. We now move from small screens to small print, which is something you should always check if you want to avoid design tactics aimed at tricking you into buying stuff. One specific example, which may be the most literal naming of a product I've ever seen, was encountered by people attempting to buy wireless earphones on Amazon. Now, any sane person would assume that, judging by the box for these earphones, they'd come as a pair, right? Two earphones are pictured, and who sells single earphones? Well, it seems like buyers are expected to look closer at the packaging, which says wireless music earphone rather than wireless music earphones. It isn't a typo. This company meant it literally. One singular earphone comes in the box, along with its humorously small charging cable. Thankfully, after a rush of complaints, this desperate attempt to trick people resulted in the seller being forced to change its Amazon listing to specify the whole single earphone truth. And while I'd argue a total removal from the store would have been better, a little honesty about a sneaky earphone design choice is still music to my ears. What's the worst example of terrible or devious design you've ever encountered? Let me know in the comments below for the yeah. I got this feeling inside my bones. You win the club, this to party, I'm there, I get paid a fee. It's right and I and I won't be long till I hit the guns fly, hit the guns fly. I'm living out in 